Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petiti Garden Centers and we are doing a Forsythia Spotlight. Now, if you're a little highfalutin, people could say it Forsythia because it was named after a botany uh, professor, Forsyth. Um, but we say Forsythia in Northeast Ohio. So Forsythia is definitely one of our harbinger of spring type shrubs. Um, obviously we love it for that bright yellow flower. All the flowers, if you look real close to Forsythia, they're four petaled flowers, okay? And their typical bloom time is right around the end of March, beginning of April and through April. So we'll usually get, it depends on weather of course and heat and temperatures and things, but we'll usually get them to flower for us. I'd say a good four weeks, maybe six weeks if we're lucky and it stays a little bit cooler. So it's always great to have them in the landscape. Um, why we love these plants? Well, first of all, for light, they can take just about any sunlight aspect they're always going to be better blooming in a full sun aspect. So that's six or more hours of direct sunlight per day. If you put them in part shade, they'll do pretty good. If you put them in shade, they'll survive. Don't get me wrong. They won't bloom the best for you. So you really can stick them in any light, but usually full sun is gonna be best. As far as watering is concerned, they are fairly good as far as being moist to slightly dry and all the places in between. So watering like any plant that you're trying to establish out in the landscape or in the garden, you wanna make sure that you're taking care of the watering, especially their first year planted in the garden. So watering deeply, one inch of water once per week, and that's what you're looking for. If it's raining and we get a lot of rainfall, just watch the rain gauge. If you're getting a half inch of rain during the week, all you're doing is supplementing with the other half inch of rain for the forsythia, okay? And they'll do fine. The whole idea with deep thorough watering one time per week is that the root system is going down and is establishing itself deeper into the soil. And so they don't dry out as quickly, okay, as they begin to mature and establish themselves in the landscape. So that's the whole idea of thorough watering, okay? Um, with these guys, soil, their soil adaptability is really a great thing about them. They can go in acidic soils, basic soils, in between, of course, neutral soils is always great, no problem whatsoever. They can tolerate clay, they can tolerate you know, well-drained kind of sandy soils as well. Um, so really, you can stick them just about anywhere. They do well in cityscapes, they do well in the countryside. So again, very, very adaptable plant. Ideally, would we want you to plant them in well-drained soil that's been amended with, you know, a planting mix or a sweet peat? Absolutely, we definitely would recommend that. So just so you know, whenever you're planting a new plant, try to amend that soil, especially in Northeast Ohio where we have hard plan clay. It's, it's a tough soil to get started in. Um, what else do we wanna know about this plant? Oh my gosh, so many wonderful things. Like I said, harbinger of spring, beautiful yellow flowering comes out first. Um, so they'll always bloom on what we say naked stems, if you will, or naked branches. And then the foliage develops after the flowering does. Commonly, we'll use forsythia in the landscape as kind of a border or a hedge, a nice, beautiful flowering hedge. Um, we'll also use them in a lot of different capacities, but it's again, because of their adaptability, you can use them in a parking lot island, literally out in the middle of a parking lot to kind of a, a wooded, partly shady border. Um, so again, just depends on what you wanna do. They are deer resistant. They make an excellent cut flower. So if you enjoy bringing some of the branches inside the home, you can actually cut them early March, bring them in, and you can actually force those branches into bloom. We should talk about the flowering that they do develop buds on old wood. So last year, last growing season, they were developing their buds to bloom for this season. So this is very key in maintenance of forsythia. They need to be pruned immediately after 
they finish their bloom cycle, okay? So again, spring bloomer, let them bloom in spring, and then go ahead and do your trimming and your cutbacks. And I'll tell you a little bit, some of these newer varieties have gotten so compact and small that you don't even have to prune them. So that's really cool as well. Forsythia will get a lot of older wood development in the center of that plant. So don't be afraid to cut some of your oldest stems back. As long as you're kind of opening that plant up every year to get more light, more air circulation, you're always gonna have good new wood development and therefore excellent flower production as you go through the season, okay? Um, what else? Let's talk about varieties here with Forsythia. Um, this one here is our standard Linwood Gold. Now Linwood is an older variety, don't get me wrong, but it's still an older, I, I should say oldie but goodie. It's a classic. So this plant, when it grows, can grow six foot, eight foot tall, okay? But it can also spread to six to 10 feet wide. So it is a big open shrub, absolutely gorgeous. This one needs a lot of space or you're going to be pruning a lot and trying to kind of keep its um, natural habit sort of more compact. That's not necessarily what you want. It's a beautiful open sprawling shrub. So just give it some space if you go with Linwood Gold. Linwood Gold has that beautiful gold coloring to it four petaled flower as well when taylor takes close up she'll show you the flower has sort of thin very open flowers or excuse me thin petals very open flowers to it so it's a little bit different from some of the other varieties very very nice the nodes that you see the flowers are about an inch, okay? So you get flowers about every inch on the stems with Linwood Gold. Now we go to um, a little bit more, let's say newer breeding, if you will. And now you have a proven winner variety that's called Show Off, okay? Now Show Off was bred to have closer bud nodes, okay? So when you look at this, it's about three quarters of an inch between the bud nodes. Plus, and when you get a close up of this flower, you'll see the flower petals are very rounded and very thick. So it's a very, very showy flower, hence the name Show Off. Um, I should mention that for Scythia as well, they are super zone hardy. So they're hardy from zone five to zone eight, negative 20 degrees in the winter time, all the way up to 20 degrees um, for warmer winters down south, okay? But really, really great plants, very, very cold hardy for us. But here's show off, beautiful uh, blooming here. This one is a little bit more compact than Linwood Gold. Show off is gonna be five to six foot tall. So still, you know, pretty big, five to six foot wide. So it's still a, a larger shrub, if you will. Moving on down the line here, I'm gonna show you Starlet. Now, Starlet is not completely open right now, just starting, but if you look at the nodes, Starlet is like a half inch, even less, okay? So a half inch between those flower buds. So again, the nodes are kind of shortening here, so that means more budding, more flowering for you. Starlet is considered to be a compact uh, Forsythia, about two to three foot tall and two to three foot wide. So again, this one can fit in a smaller space in the landscape, no problem. And you really won't have to do any pruning to it if you don't need to, okay? The last one, and this is actually the shortest one that we have here today, this one's called Show Off Sugar Baby. So these are all part of, these proven winners are all part of the Show Off series, original Show Off, Show Off Starlet, show off sugar baby. Again, sugar baby is definitely less than a half inch node, full of buds and blooms, very, very pretty, even shorter. So the max height, what Proven Winner says, it's around two and a half foot. They stay pretty darn compact. So usually around 18 inches to two and a half foot tall and basically the same width. So just slightly smaller than Starlet. Again, you could put this in a container and make it a thriller if you wanted to plant some spring pansies around the base. That would be a really fun combo. So 
as far as these varieties are concerned, Forsythia is gonna be great out in the garden for you. Wonderful deer resistance, extremely adaptable to different types of soils, pH, and also soil conditions, clay or sandy or what have you. They work in a lot of really pretty spring blooming situations, obviously because they are that late March, beginning of April bloomer through usually the month of April for us in Northeast Ohio. So you can use them and use them as a cut stem as well, arranging indoors during the winter. So that's nice to cut them at the end of February, beginning of March and enjoy them indoors. So again, lots of positives with this family fairly easy to grow and just a great classic shrub. Enjoy.